Hey guys, what's up? Sermon 11 here with my review of Sword Art Online 2, or Season 2, Episode 18, Forest House. Now, my reviews are really long, and that's mainly because of the fact that I have to return to the episode to review it, and I also like to talk about minor details. I, I go back to the episode to like, um, because I, I forget facts about the episode and certain things are kind of left out. And I wanted to review this episode because it brought me back to the days of SAO, you know, the original game. And I think it was the fact that, you know, they had some sort of thing that they hear about and then they try to beat it. it. It's happened in other games, but I don't know, in SAO it was just really interesting and unique in concept. I guess it was just special. And I hope the author maybe returns to them being trapped in the game again. I think that would be really cool. Um... Also, we could see how that affects them psychologically because, you know, we had the whole thing with Kirito and Death Gun. Um, maybe they could have some sort of relapse if they're put back into this uh, this pressured situation or something. Um, I know there's a game after this, I believe, so maybe it could happen in that arc. Or, or maybe it's an arc, I'm not sure. So this episode starts off with the gang doing their homework in the video game. And seriously, what can you not do in this video game? I, I don't know. And I guess AOL is going to be the um, ALO. I said AOL, right? I guess A Alfheim Online is going to be the main game since Sword Art Online is within Alfheim Online now. And seriously, you can do so much in this video game. You can sleep, uh, what happened in 16.5, get married, eat, etc. And the whole scene is actually in the future of the episode. The opening changed a little bit since this is a new arc, Mother's Rosario. And the ending is a new ending, which is cool. Uh, did we have an ending for only three episodes? I think there was an ending before this, right? I don't even remember. But the new ending's pretty good. And I heard Asuna will be the main character for this arc. So we learn more. This is like in real life now. We learn more about Agil, um, Agil or whatever. He, he met a girl in a video game. And they had a bet or something to see who would go into SAO first since they could only get their hands on one nerve gear. And he was glad that he won because, you know, they all got trapped in the video game. And she isn't around, so I'm, I wonder, is there more to this or was this just said for no reason? Could she be the girl in the ending and the opening? You know, the one that looks like a purple Asuna. I believe her name is Yuki. We don't, we don't know. Well, I don't know. <laughs> and basically the characters are talking about what kept them going in SAO. For Kiritos, his family. For Asuna, it was Kiritos, and she didn't really like her family. And I seriously hate people like this. Like, you don't like your family. Go run away or something. Um, I, I just think some people are really ungrateful. And Asuna's rich. I mean, um, some people, like, she complained about certain things, and certain things are understandable, but you don't like your family. I think that's I think that's really stupid. And I have people in real life that have told me that they don't really like their parents. And I know you're not going to be with your parents forever, but friends or even a girlfriend is no replacement for them. And I just think this sort of mindset is dumb, but maybe I'm looking way too into it. I, I just think, well, if you have something bad going on at home, maybe that's a reason why. But other than that, to just say that, like when your parents are trying to help you or something, I think it's really stupid. And I find it ironic that this arc is occurring around Christmas, just like the one in Log Horizon. Log Horizon is a great anime if you haven't watched it. And um, more floors have opened up on the new SAO, you know, the Sword Art Online, Ancrid thing, or whatever, Eincrad, um thing that came flying up in the end of Alfheim Online, or Sword Art Online Season 1. Um, floor 22 was where their house was, and Floor 22 is now opened. So the gang is fighting a boss, and I don't know why Asuna does spells and sword skills. I kind of just liked her using sword skills. Maybe it's because of her, her race or whatever in the game. But I think, it, can everyone do spells? Because I remember Kirito did a spell, and that wasn't really explained um, back in Season 1. And her and Kirito do the switch technique, which is awesome. And this game is really flexible in what you can do. I don't think I've played many games where you can attack a boss before he attacks you and then he'll stop. It happens in some video games, but um, in other video games, the boss would just attack you and you probably would both hit each other or one attack would um, take priority over the other. And I think a game like this wouldn't 
really wouldn't be possible right now. There's so much that you would have to cover, like a simple switch of swords, like what Kirito does. It sounds complicated to me, but I really did love the callback to the switch thing. It reminds me of their first boss f fight, which was um, really awesome. And they beat the boss and rebuy their house. And I remember this in SAO. I really didn't like this part. It was so relaxed. And I just really disliked Yui's character. But it was nice to see her transform back into her human form. And I don't know how she isn't, like, or how she wasn't deleted by the game yet. Um, I, I don't know. But I find her to be an annoyance. But that wasn't based on this episode. It's just, like, based on past episodes and stuff in this um, season as well. And Asuna's looking around the house. And she's, like, being all nostalgic. And, you know, um, all their furniture is gone. But... We kind of go back to like the beginning of the episode and there's furniture in the house. So I guess they had enough money to pay for all that or something. And you know, all the friend, all their friends are there and stuff. So it's, it's different. Like their family has gotten bigger in a way, I guess you could say. And Liz brings up a, a player named Zekin and it's a nickname for some players. Um, I, it, I think it means like ultimate sword or something like that. And we get a flashback to Asuna's life and... She's in a kimono and like three, she's at like some sort of family event or some sort of, I don't know, rich people event. And like three guys come up to her and talk to her. And I was thinking SAO was about to pull like another um, rape scene or something. Because these guys just gave off a weird vibe. But maybe these guys could just be players of the video game. It was just like the way they looked. It didn't really give me a good vibe. Or maybe they could be Zekin or something. And it's just like the whole scene didn't look too positive to me. So every day, these Zekin guys, um, it's more than one player. They wait at three at like a, a big tree in um, Alfheim Online, and they fight players. And the big deal about them is their sword skill, and I believe they only showed it for day one. Their sword skill does 11 hits, and the second strongest um, sword skill is Eugene, who Kirito already fought in Alfheim Online. And Eugene's sword skill does 8 hits. And I liked how old things are being brought up. They, they kind of did that a lot in this episode. And Silica talks about how it took her 6 months to start flying. I like that. While it took a while, it seems realistic um, with a video game like this. Where you're controlling your player directly. I, I thought it made sense. And Liz and Leafa already fought Zekin and they lost. And we find out something really interesting that Kirito already fought Zekin and lost. And the problem is that Kirito didn't use both swords. And he was being serious but with one sword. And I guess you, what they said in the episode was Kirito only fights seriously or I guess at his max when it's a life or death situation. You know, when they were trapped in the game. So he probably would have won if he had used his... Uh, I, don't, I don't think he has the dual sword skill anymore. I think it's just two swords now. But that's what I assume. And then there was a, co a, co a conversation between Kirito and Zekin that I guess will be important late later. They talked about something and then Kirito lost the fight. And Zekin also isn't um, an SAO, SAO survivor. Kirito said that would be impossible. I'm not sure what that means, but we'll see. And Kirito said that if they were um, an SAO survivor, they would have gotten the two-sword skill that Kirito had gotten. And I don't really remember why Kirito got that skill. If you could remind me without spoiling anything for the arc, uh, that would be cool. And we also find out that Asuna has two accounts on Alfame Online, which isn't a big deal, but it's cool to hear about. And I think Zekin could be the girl in the opening, because Zekin was a person in armor, but I believe it was a male, so who knows. But since there's more than one Zekin, maybe she's one of them. And I'm not sure why this arc centers around Asuna. She's cool, but I would prefer Kirito or maybe both of them, you know, like to really go back to the SAO days. And so this episode brought up some interesting developments and more stuff than the Caliber arc. And I wonder, will Kirito even be able to use Excalibur or was that even important to the overall story? And if you guys would like to follow me on social media, I have a Facebook account and a Twitter account, which are in the description. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace.